Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel. Today we've got Marco here. We're going to be discussing gas costs in the space of NFTs and smart contracts on the blockchain. First of all, uh, welcome Marco back to my channel. Looking forward to our chat today. Hi everyone. Thank you, Daniel, for having me here. Yeah, that's fantastic. And it brings us to the question in today's video. Uh, why is gas cost even needed? Marco, let's discuss gas cost. What is it, right? What is gas in uh, blockchain? Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, we have to think about that um, like something that changes depending on the chain, of course. Uh, there are chains that work in different ways. So gas cost, uh, the way it's calculated, the way it's managed uh, uh, can can change from chain to chain. Uh, in some cases, the gas can go to the miners. In other cases, like an Ethereum, it's simply burned. So um, this must be taken into consideration. Taken into consideration. But um, there is also uh, one thing that is come onto pretty much every chain. So the reason why cost uh, the gas exists, that cost exists. Mm -hmm. And that's because uh, they want to make sure that uh, whenever you do a transaction on the chain, uh, you are actually paying something for that. And it, so you want abuse the service basically so uh, there is interest for all the people around not to abuse the service because they have to pay in order to do the transaction and usually that transaction the cost depends on the complexity of the action that you are taking on the chain um, on ethereum uh, with the proof of uh, work that is active now uh, things are going to change uh, with the uh, probably with the proof of stake uh, but with proof of work, uh, uh, it's a bit different because the gas, as we know it, is totally burned. And uh, there is a revenue for the uh, miners, which comes from uh, uh, the amount of, uh, um, of Ethereum that can be created, um, minted actually, uh, out, uh, as a revenue for each block. So, um, yeah, in, in that case, the, there is no fee that goes from the gas to the miners. Uh, what happens is the gas is totally burned out. So it's uh, Ethereum that is not available anymore. And the miners are getting a fee uh, from, um, yeah, from minting uh, that, uh, that new coin. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that can de yeah, that depends on the chain, of course. Okay. And, you know, I think for the viewers today, um, it's something important underlying and also uh, fits in our discussion. Uh, you touched on it briefly, which is proof of work and proof of stake. Um, maybe you can give us a brief uh, description of the two. Um, from a basic uh, perspective, uh, you can think of it like uh, in with the proof of work, what you do is actually in order to uh, be considered, uh, in order to be trusted by the network, you have to prove that you are spending a lot of uh, money, for example, for energy in order to do a computational task or whatever. Um, in some way, you are um, doing something that is proven to be uh, a huge effort in order to get to the result. And that effort is uh, a trust uh, mechanism uh, for, the, for the whole network. With the proof of stake, that's different because you are basically saying, okay, I have this amount of resources that are usually usually um, the, the same um, coin that the chain is, work, is working on. So for example, in Ethereum, you are putting some ETH on stake and uh, that amount is uh, blocked there and uh, you cannot take it back. You do your work as a, as a validator node and uh, depending on your behavior in the network, that stake might grow up or you might get, um, maybe you do something dodgy or you do something wrong with the network, you try to scam people, stuff like that. In that case, uh, a, a fraction or even a huge amount of your stake might be taken by the other nodes that are validating all the, the chain stacks. Yeah, and, and it doesn't even have to be 
they're just scamming, right? If if validator nodes uh, don't have enough uptime, for instance, you know, and they constantly go down or, you know, um, break some of the guidelines that goes with um, doing, you know, the validation part, um, you know, what is the gas cost involved uh, when working with the Ethereum chain? And let's take an example of deploying a contract. What kind of gas fees are involved yeah. and how do you think it's calculated? Yeah, a lot of people think that uh, gas cost is related to the action that you are taking. So if you are uh, transferring some uh, Ethereum, you pay a certain amount of gas. Or if you are, um, you're not actually paying, as we said, it's actually you're burning that gas uh, with the transaction. But uh, if you are deploying a contract, for example, another type of action, you are going to pay uh, a certain fee that is related to the contract deployment action, okay? Uh, that's not actually true because every time that you perform any operation, any transaction on the chain, that operation might require a different amount of work. So um, when deploying a contract, depending on the size of the contract, the amount of functionalities that you put in there, uh, you might end up with a completely different gas cost for that. And that's the same for any transaction, any function that you're calling on a contract. If you have a very, very long function doing a lot of stuff, you're going to pay a lot of gas. And if you have a very simple task, it's going to be pretty much like uh, transferring Ethereum. Okay. So it comes down to kind of what you do mostly, you know, and what's the underlying functions that needs to be called uh, on the chain. And that gas will facilitate that function to run. Now, there's also this concept of you might be paying, let's say, $50 in gas. And, you know, it might not be enough if you set it too low and it can run out of gas and not complete that transaction, correct? Yeah, of course. Um, there are multiple things. Of course, we're trying to keep this stuff uh, pretty simple. But uh, the amount of situations that you can run into are uh, a lot. Um, you may have said... Um, uh, a certain amount of gas, uh, max amount of gas that you are um, willing to pay for the transaction to be uh, processed successfully. Uh, you, did, you do this every time, even if you don't know uh, MetaMask or whatever wallet you're using is setting this value for you unless you go and tweak the, the settings. And that amount is the maximum that you are willing to pay for the transactions to be performed. Um, in, you know, when uh, blocks get minted, every block determines the amount of gas that the, the cost for the gas that the blocks that come later. So, what can happen when a lot of people are using the chain? Uh, the gas cost can, may increase, and um, with the gas cost increasing, each operation, a single operation involved in a transaction, also costs uh, more. So, uh, let's say you said. Um, a limit for your transaction of uh, uh, 50 units. We're not talking about way or stuff. We're simply, it's 50, uh, just a number. And um, the same transaction, because of the other transactions that were run before, uh, now costs uh, 55, for example. In that case, your transaction won't be able to be picked by the, the nodes and won't be able to, to run successfully. So that's one of the cases. But there are many, many more. Yeah, absolutely. And it's simply because, you know, the chain wants to run as efficient as it wants to and as fast as it can. So there's this term called gas wars. And basically is what Mark was just explaining right now, Mark. It's like when I do a transaction of $50, but you come in and you are prepared to pay more gas at $60, your transaction would most likely go through first. And with NFT contracts, usually when it comes to minting, people run up that gas price because they want that item. And that's where gas wars uh, comes in play. And it just skyrockets sometimes into the 500,000s mark if the uh, contract is not optimized. Now, I want to end this video off because we've touched on gas, um, you know, and why it's important to pay the gas, to do the work and so on. Uh, but there are certainly ways that you can reduce gas as a developer and also, you know, make it easy for people to mint an NFT, for example. Yeah, absolutely. There are a lot of things that you can do. And uh, of course, some of them are uh, 
very easy. And if you structure your code properly, you're not going to run into problems and your gas fees will be very, very low. And there are also some extreme optimizations that require uh, quite a good amount of skills uh, as a developer, some low level stuff. We are dealing with the memory directly. Um, yeah, there are a lot of ways to, to achieve that. But yeah, we can maybe touch uh, this kind of topic in another video. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. We can go into depth about gas. But I mean, for this video, understand that gas is necessary to do the work, um, you know, to get it done. And obviously, with the optimizations coming in from Ethereum side, hopefully we'll see gas costs being reduced, but we never know what might happen. So currently as developers, we have the responsibility of using optimized contracts to make the gas lower. So we don't just burn so much gas. Marco, thank you so much for being here today. I had a lot of fun talking about gas and I hope the users enjoy it. If you did, uh, give my channel a follow, give Marco's channel a follow, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.